how could you not love a J45? Welcome to Guitar Hunter Live. One of the coolest things about living in the same town that I grew up in and I used to work in and have my first real job in is that I get to see all the things that are connected to my work and my uh, what I've done in the world. This is the absolute first vintage guitar I ever sold when I worked in a vintage guitar shop. So let's talk about it. This 1961 Gibson J45 and there's so much cool mojo about this. Before we dig in, make sure you subscribe down below. I'm Jeremy, I'm the Guitar Hunter. I'm trying to fill the world with music and friendship by building a community of guitar hunters who find cool guitars, uh, learn how to play new songs, connect to people, build new friends. It's a good life. Make sure you're subscribed and you're connected. Uh, anyway, let's dig in. This, like I said, is a 1961 Gibson J50. Uh, it is incredibly cool. Um, it is the Cherry Sunburst, Sitka Spruce Top, Mahogany Back and Sides. So the story of this guitar. In 2005, I was a newly high school graduated, newly tattooed, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, optimistic guitar salesman making minimum wage at my favorite guitar shop in the world, the Guitar Amp Center, which is no longer around, but it was such a cool shop and I had such a great experience working there. I remember thinking that this guitar was so much guitar for the money. I think we were only asking $16.99 or something for it. And that is kind of indicative of the guy that I worked for. He is, uh, his name is Warren and he is just a lion heart. He's so generous and kind and he always gave musicians really good deals. I often felt like um, he sold them for too little. Anyway, so $16.99 was what he was asking for this guitar. And I called an old family friend of mine. We were trying to sell as many guitars as we could and I was just starting out in sales. And so I just started thinking of who did I know that liked guitars and might like this guitar? And I called one of my old family friends uh, a guy named Cameron. So Cameron is just kind of straight out of that, like went to college in the 60s, uh, Bob Dylan style singer songwriter. And uh, he has a J50 from around the same time. I knew that he had a J50 that was really clean and he didn't want to play out and about. So that's where I thought maybe this guitar would be really cool for him. He came in, loved it and took it with all of its dings and dents and bangs and weird things, which we will talk about here in just one second. Now, with this guitar, as I've gotten back into seeing this guitar and being around this, it's way more banged up than I remember it being. I remember it having a hole in the top and one back crack. So there is a hole down here. I am assuming, because there's two tiny little Mars in the sound hole, I am assuming that there was a sound hole pickup at some point in this guitar and there was a volume pot here. That's the only thing that really makes sense. Now it is in a very goofy spot, right? If you're trying to make a guitar look like a J160, you would probably put it more around here. That didn't happen, don't know why, but it is what it is. When we got it, I don't, I just remember it showing up. I don't remember where it came from, but I remember that this little grommet went in there. Uh, that was Warren's touch. It was just a hole drilled through the wood. There are no cracks coming off it. It's fine, it's not going anywhere. But you know, okay, that's fine. We can live with that. The other thing I remember doing personally is swapping these buttons. I remember that these buttons were all worn out and you know, crusty and cracky. And so I remember taking these tuners off, putting them in a vise and putting new turning keys on them. Okay, so both of those work. Okay, so the tuner buttons are switched and there's a hole in the top. Now we get into the stuff that I just don't, I didn't remember and it's, actually pretty rough. Um, so the big one is there are two cracks right here on the top. Look at that. Hands free, baby. Um, just squeezing it between my knees here. But there are two cracks on the front of the headstock here. And then there are two big cracks that go back on the back side of this headstock. It's repaired really well, but like most old Gibsons, it has just bonked hard on the floor at some point. So that's okay. Now uh, we're gonna move down to the fingerboard uh, and down to this bridge because this is the next thing that I want you to, to see and to pay attention to. Let me tell the camera to focus there. Okay, so as you look at the bridge, you'll notice a couple things. The first thing on the bridge is that the bridge has been replaced. 
Uh, and then the bridge, well, the reason you know it's been replaced is that it's not an adjustable bridge, which it should be because there's a bunch of things about this. Like the time frame is the time of adjustable bridge J45s. And then also inside the guitar, it says J45 ADJ, which means adjustable. Um, so this bridge has been replaced. Also, the replacement bridge for this had the saddle put in the wrong place. You can see that it has been filled and that a new slot has been cut. Now, what that does mean is that this guitar, yes, it's had a bridge swap, but the intonation is probably much closer than it ever was before. So that's actually a better thing than a worse thing, but it's modified. I had a similar at a JD, I had a 61 J50, same thing. Had a swapped bridge, bridge was filled, new saddle was cut, but it was dead on intonated, which is awesome. So there are a couple more things on this guitar that we should talk about. The other thing that I looked for is, I know with big pick guards like this, there's usually a crack somewhere connected to them, and this one has two. There's a crack here at the top of the sound hole, then there's another crack, just a tiny little crack from the end of this pick guard down to the bridge plate. Both have been glued, both are okay. Now, one that I had forgotten about uh, is this crack right down the center line here. Um, not the end of the world, but it is, it doesn't look great. One, two, three, four top cracks. Okay, that's fine, 1961, that makes sense. Um, now, let's flip it around to the side. So up here on the side is also a crack, and this is an amazing thing that John Schultz actually just explained to me. He was like, hey, that side crack, I bet it doesn't go all the way through to the inside. Uh, and I looked through and it definitely doesn't. It, it doesn't come all the way through, which is amazing. All of that to say, let's move to the back and I'll show you the last thing. So there's three cracks on the top. There's one up here. There's a long one over here, and then there's just a short little smaller one. I haven't seen this guitar in a long time. It's worse than I remember, but here's what is just crazy to me. It sounds freaking great. It has really dead strings on it, but dead strings on a J45 are just right. So uh, I wanna play it a little bit. I wanna get it restrung and set up, and then we'll come back and we'll hear it in the end. And I guess I'll put in whatever closing thoughts I have uh, for this, but I think this is just a cool one I wanted to show you. So check it out. For my picks, I use the Dunlop Prime Tone. These are my favorite picks. Uh, they just sound killer. And to me, they sound like a blue chip and they are like a dollar, dollar fifty a piece, rather than like 35 bucks for a blue chip. Intonation is really good. Let's get it restrung, cleaned up.
likable. How could you not love a J45? This thing is like fun and spunky and bouncy and playful. Sounds really cool. It's super dynamic. I love you can really get your wrist and like get a whole lot more out of it. Now what's cool about this guitar is that this thing has stood the test of time. It has been kicked, beaten, broken, dropped, knocked over, repaired, glued, sprayed, um, pried. I mean, just everything that could happen to a guitar and this thing's still freaking standing. If it was any of just the one of these things, it would get me. Like, if it was a neck crack, I'm like, oh boy, I'm out. But if it's, you know, that, or if it was just, you know, what's well, got a top crack? Like, okay, well, that kind of stinks. But when you start seeing, it has a neck crack, has tuners, tuner buttons that are swapped, has three cracks on the top, has a crack on the side, has three cracks on the back, and uh, it just it had a bridge swap, the bridge that was swapped was wrong and had to be filled and fixed, and it has a hole in the top. <laughs> but somehow, it still sounds incredible, and that's where like, all of these things matter a lot until they don't matter pretty much at all. And that's where I stand with this. I think that this thing is just cool and tested and true. Now with that, it's not gonna sell for the same price that it would sell, uh, you know, a clean uh, original version, but I would say it's getting harder and harder to find real original player uh, J45s. And J45s and J50s from the 50s and 60s are still inconsistent. So it's really rare to get one that sounds good. So for me, I'm like, sounding good, covers a multitude of sins. And so this guitar sounds really good to me and I just can't get over it. So this guitar is, might be for sale. So basically this guitar is on loan for me to look at, review, check out, film a video, restring, get set up. Um, and so there are a couple things that are worth noting, but I think let's talk about money first. So um, the guy who owns this guitar was asking me how much I think it's worth. And so that's a good question and a fair question. Um, I don't know. Um, I have some guesses. What's crazy is there's the receipt in the original case. I thought this guitar sold for a lot more money. Remember how I talked about how my old boss was super generous? So I think he went from $18.95 to $12.95 on this guitar. And then he was super generous and gave a couple trades. I think there's like a Yamaha in there and there's a couple things. I'll, I'll show the screenshot um, of the receipt. And um, it's, it's amazing. I mean, it's just super generous. So uh, I think in actual dollars, I think the owner is in this like three or 400 bucks technically. I mean, it depends on how much he had and all that other stuff. But as far as like old guitars plus, ca plus cash output. Uh, but so while I was restringing this, I did notice a couple things about it. Um, the action, dare I say, the action is great down here. It's just a smidge high. And uh, the truss rod is fine. If you could maybe get a little tighter. There are a couple things I noticed. Um, the saddle has a shim underneath it, which doesn't matter. It's a well-cut, full-size shim. I actually remember doing it. So maybe I'm tooting my own horn, but I remember cutting and shaping the shim for this guitar. Um, the other thing I've noticed is that all of the frets, I cleaned the frets up with some 2000 grit uh, sandpaper. Uh, easy trick on a rosewood board. It just cleans up really well. But when I did that, I noticed that every fret, these have been uh, crowned and leveled and planed. So these, there are some flat spots, but the flat spots are so that you get clearance. Um, so the guitar plays all over, but uh, there's been some, there's some hillbilly engineering has occurred. Instead of doing a refret, uh, there was just some leveling being taken out of the frets. If you are curious about that, uh, Ben Padgett does a better explanation of that in a video where I take two Buzzy Martins to him. So go check out that video up here. But overall, this guitar sounds incredible. And to, ever, to whomever would buy this, this is a survivor. I mean, this is like... I don't know, what's a car analogy? It's like finding a fox body that every corner's been dinged and dented, but somehow that five liter engine is still just roaring and you can still break the tires loose. I mean, this thing has so much power under the hood. It's so cool and it still just works. We're like, I don't know how it's working, but I love what it does. And that's how I feel about this guitar, so. Very cool. So, I guess I didn't say the number. <laughs> I should say the number. I think that this guitar is worth $2,000, $2,500. I mean, especially right now, the whole market is pretty crazy. Like 
find another 60s J45 for under two grand. Find a, a recent J45 for under two grand. Neck crack isn't going anywhere. The tuners work great. I mean, this is just a cool guitar. It's a good survivor. But yeah, two grand, 2,500. I'll let you know if it does go for sale. If it, if it does, there's a chance I'll be selling it on consignment, but I think he was just also kind of wondering for his own playing. He wants to get back into playing a little bit. He's in his mid seventies now. So anyway, thanks for watching this video. I am Jeremy, I am the Guitar Hunter. This has been a 61. Does that stress you out? I'm just gonna keep doing it. See how much it stresses you out. This is a 1961 Gibson J45. Freaking cool guitar. Uh, make sure you subscribe, hit the like. Tell YouTube that this is worthwhile. Thumbs up. Two thumbs up. I like this guitar. I think you should buy it. If it's for sale. Go to my website. That's how you know when things are for sale. Or you can send me messages on Instagram.